I wonder how many women need to die to make these forced birther women reevaluate their stance on abortion care and reproductive rights for other women. How many women need to die? Is there a threshold? Because I don't know it. Because these stories are so terrible. This woman holding this baby died because doctors in Texas wouldn't get rid of an unviable fetus that was in her. They were going to make her be a walking womb and carry this dead, unviable fetus in her body, which caused her to have sepsis and die and take this mother away from this child, this living child that she is holding in her arms. This is an article from ProPublica. A woman died after being told it would be a crime to intervene in her miscarriage at a Texas hospital. Jocelyn Barnica is one of at least two pregnant Texas women who died after doctors delayed emergency care. She told her husband that the medical team said it couldn't act until the fetal heartbeat stopped. These are the authors of the ProPublica article if you want to look this up. Jocelyn Barnica grieved the news as she lay in a Houston hospital on September 3rd, 2021. The sibling she dreamt of giving her daughter would not survive this pregnancy. The fetus was on the verge of coming out, its head pressed against her dilated cervix. She was 17 weeks pregnant and a miscarriage was in progress, doctors noted in hospital records. At that point, they should have offered to speed up the delivery or empty her uterus to stave off a deadly infection, more than a dozen medical experts told ProPublica. But when Barnica's husband rushed to her side from his job on a construction site, she relayed what she said the medical team had told her. They had to wait until there was no heartbeat, he told ProPublica in Spanish. It would be a crime to terminate. For 40 hours, the anguished 28-year-old mother prayed for doctors to help her get home to her daughter, all the while her uterus remained exposed to bacteria. Three days after she delivered, Barnica died of an infection. Barnica is one of at least two Texas women who ProPublica found lost their lives after doctors delayed treating miscarriages, which fall into a gray area under the state's strict termination ban that prohibit doctors from ending the heartbeat of a fetus. Neither had wanted a termination, but that didn't matter though proponents insist that the law protects both the life of the fetus and the woman carrying it in practice. Doctors have hesitated to provide care under the threat of prosecution, prison time, and professional ruin. ProPublica is telling these women's stories this week, starting with Barnica's. Her death was preventable, according to more than a dozen medical experts who reviewed a summary of her hospital and autopsy records at ProPublica's request. They call her case horrific, astounding, and egregious. The doctors involved in Barnica's care at HCA Houston Healthcare Northwest did not respond to multiple requests for comments on her case. In a statement, HCA Healthcare said, our responsibility is to be in compliance with applicable state and federal laws and regulations and said that physicians exercise their independent judgment. The company did not respond to a detailed list of questions about Barnica's care. So they have to be in compliance with federal law. Who gives a damn about the woman that's laying there dying? But at least they didn't go to jail for that. Like all states, Texas has a committee of maternal health experts who review such deaths to recommend, to recommend ways to prevent them. But the committee's reports on individual cases are not public, and members said they have not finished examining the cases from 2021, the year Barnica died. ProPublica is working to fill gaps in knowledge about the consequences of these bans. Reporters scoured death data flagging Barnica's case for its concerning cause of death sepsis involving products of conception. We tracked down her family, obtained autopsy and hospital records, and listed a range of experts to review a summary of her care that ProPublica created in consultation with the doctors. Here's the autopsy report, cause of death, sepsis. Among those experts were more than a dozen OBGYNs and maternal fetal medicine specialists from across the country, including researchers at prestigious institutions, doctors who regularly handle miscarriages, and experts who have served on state maternal mortality review committees or held posts at national professional medical organizations. 
After reviewing the four page summary, which included the timeline of care noted in hospital records, all agreed that requiring Barnica to wait to deliver until after there was no detectable fetal heartbeat violated professional medical standards because it could allow time for an aggressive infection to take hold. They said there was a good chance she would have survived if she was offered an intervention earlier. If this was Massachusetts or Ohio, she would have had the delivery within a couple of hours, said Dr. Susan Mann, a national patient safety expert in obstetric care who teaches at Harvard University. Many noted a striking similarity to the case of Savita Halap Pavanar, a 31-year-old woman who died of septic shock in 2012 after providers in Ireland refused to empty her uterus while she was miscarrying at 17 weeks. When she begged for care, a midwife told her, this is a Catholic country. The resulting investigation and public outcry galvanized the country to change its strict ban on terminating pregnancies. But in the wake of deaths related to termination access in the United States, leaders who, res who support restricting the right have not called for any reforms because they don't give a damn about women's lives in these forced birther states. Last month, ProPublica told the stories of two Georgia women, Amber Thurman and Candy Miller, whose deaths were deemed preventable by the state's Maternal Mortality Review Committee after they were unable to access legal abortions in a timely uh, medical care, I'm sorry, and timely medical care amid the bans. Georgia Governor Brian Kemp called the reporting fear-mongering. Former President Donald Trump has not weighed in except to joke that his Fox News town hall on women's issues would get better ratings than a press call where Thurman's family spoke about their pain. Leaders in Texas, which has the nation's oldest termination ban, have witnessed the consequences of such restrictions longer than those in any other state. In lawsuits, court petitions, and news stories, dozens of women have said they faced dangers when they were denied terminations starting in 2021. One suffered, one suffered sepsis like Barnica, but survived after three days in intensive care. She lost part of her fallopian tube. Lawmakers have made small concessions to clarify two exceptions for medical emergencies, but even in those cases, doctors risk up to 99 years in prison and fines of $100,000. They can argue in court that, they, that their actions were not a crime, much like the defendants can claim self-defense after being charged with murder. Amid the deluge of evidence of the harm, including research suggesting Texas's legislation has increased infant and maternal deaths, some of the band's most prominent supporters have muted their public enthusiasm for it. United States Senator Ted Cruz, who, was, who once championed the fall of Roe, said that pregnancy is not a life-threatening illness, is now avoiding the topic amid a battle to keep his seat. And Governor Greg, Greg Abbott, who said early last year that we promised we would protect the life of every child with a heartbeat, and we did, has not made similar statements since. Both declined to comment to ProPublica, as did State Attorney General Kim Paxton, whose commitment to the ban remains steadfast as he fights for access to out-of-state medical records of women who travel for termination. Earlier this month, as the nation grappled with the first reported preventable deaths related to termination access, Paxton celebrated the decision by the U.S. Supreme Court that allowed Texas to ignore federal guidance requiring doctors to provide terminations that are ne needed to stabilize emergency patients. This is a major victory. Texas went to court to say that we want the right to allow women that are facing emergencies to die because we would rather let them die than offer them emergency care. This vote, this election is so important because if Donald Trump gets anywhere near the presidency, he will have the opportunity to probably put two more extra conservative um, judges on the court in replacing um, Clarence Thomas and one of those old, other old men that is extra conservative. And those people serve for life. They serve for life. And they are impacting women's actual lives. They keep rolling back gains that women have had um, over the last 50 or so years that women have fought for. So vote blue, vote, vote, vote now. All right, y'all join the conversation. Let me know what you think about this. Don't forget to like, comment and share.